The contrapositive is a very important translation rule. It's mainly used for simplifying conditionals that use negations, but it's used extensively in LSAT logic games. Contrapositive is easy to illustrate. If I live in Paris, then I live in France. This is a conditional claim, and it happens to be true, assuming we're talking about the Paris, the city with the Eiffel Tower, not some other city with the same name. Now, if this is true, then this is also true if I don't live in France and I don't live in Paris. What I've just said here is the contrapositive of the conditional on top. The contrapositive is a conditional formed by switching the antecedent and the consequent and negating them. Here's the general rule. If A then B can always be rewritten as if not B, then not A. Here are a few more examples. If we win the game, then we'll win the championship. If this is true, then if we didn't win the championship, we can be sure that we didn't win the game. The rule applies to all conditionals, even false or nonsensical ones like this one. If George Bush is a robot, then Jackie Chan is vice president. This is absurd, of course, but if this conditional was true, if George Bush's being a robot actually entailed that Jackie Chan was the vice president, then the contrapositive would also be true. If Jackie Chan is not vice president, and George Bush can't be a robot. For our last example, let's mix it up. Here's a conditional. You won't become a good player if you don't practice. Now it's written with the if in the middle. So to write the contrapositive, you have to make sure you've got the antecedent, the consequent right. Well, the if rule says that whatever follows the if is the antecedent. So we know the antecedent is you don't practice. The consequent is you won't become a good player. Now, to write the contrapositive, you switch the antecedent and the consequent and negate both parts. The consequent of the original is you won't become a good player. Negating this, you get you will become a good player. This becomes the antecedent of the contrapositive if you become a good player. Sometimes when you're doing translations, you might want to shift tenses a bit to make a claim sound more natural. In this case, I've written it as you become a good, a good player rather than you will become a good player, but it doesn't make much difference. I could also have written it as you became a good player. Once you've got the antecedent of the contrapositive, it's easy to write the consequent. If you become a good player, then you must have practiced. The challenge with problems like these is not to get turned around and mistake an antecedent for a consequent. In this case, the most common error would be to interpret the contrapositive as if you practice, then you'll become a good player. This is very tempting, but it's not entailed by the original claim. The original claim doesn't say that if you practice, you're guaranteed to become a good player. All it says is that if you don't practice, then you're certainly not going to become a good player. So what we can infer from this is that if you end up becoming a good player, then we can be sure of one thing, that you practiced. The value of these translation rules is that they keep you from assuming that you know more than you do, based on the information given.